about 7 a.m. right now, maybe 40 degrees. We came over here to take a look at the mountains. And what a sight to behold this morning back here with Telescope Peak rising above the cloud layer. And it's just with every passing minute, which colors are changing. So we're going to sit back and enjoy this for a little while. And today we are headed up Echo Canyon. We want to kind of get an idea of what the camp spots look like up here for future reference. But we also just want to take a drive and find a place to picnic. Um, we haven't had a grilled cheese on this trip yet. So that's sounding really delicious. It's about 9.30 in the morning and I'm already getting a bit hungry. We just had a fantastic conversation with a park ranger. We stopped and said hello to him, asked if he was looking for the sheep up here and he said yeah. And we just got schooled on a whole lesson. Um, he said that the sheep are in the area. He's gonna do a little bit of um, attempting to locate them. And he said there's about 60 up in these mountains here. Six to 700 animals oh. in the entire park mm. um, in this echo and the Southern funerals. They estimate about 60 animals. In general, the bigger point we were talking about was how the relationship uh, between the sheep and the burrows, the wild burrow and the wild horse population, and how there's uh, just thousands and thousands of these burrows up here who are obviously not native, how they're trampling water sources and endangering the sheep because they're very protective of the uh, their territory. You know, the, the water sources up here are, because they're super scarce, uh, make them all that more important to those sheep who are native and endemic to the area. So. these canyons can get really overrun with recreational activity. Obviously that impacts the wildlife up here as well. Um, wildlife tend to move away from areas where humans congregate. And when you get um, parties and bonfires, it uh, can be you know, detrimental to that wildlife's ability to inhabit those areas. That's nice. Uh, it makes sense to have that permitting system. I think it's a good thing. We have to do what we can to protect our public lands. You gotta respect. So we are up near the plateau of the Funeral Mountains here in Echo Canyon. And we're gonna have a little bit of a lunch, grilled cheese. It's a bit chilly here. It's like um, 45 degrees and there's not a lot of sun coming out because there's a storm moving in apparently. But we're gonna have a nice hot lunch and then um, go back down the road or something, go explore, check it out. Oops. <laughs> That's a mighty fine meal to put in your belly, not only when it's cold and when you're camping, but just in general. Mm. That was good. Sure is. Something else that we learned from Ranger Bill pertains to the sign that we saw yesterday going up Hanapa Canyon. It was a sign that said not to use the water from the creek. Didn't really know what it was referring to, but in talking to the ranger, we asked him about that and he, re he revealed to us in 2019 that some brazen folks started a grow operation in Hanapa Canyon. And in doing so, laid down irrigation, terraced the hillside, and used chemical fertilizer to grow their, their plants. 
illegally, of course. And even though it's legal in California to with a license to grow. Um, so anyways, by using that chemical fertilizer, that seeped into the soil and has now contaminated the creek in that area. And there's linkage between the results of that and the death of a mountain lion up there by that creek, uh, death of a bighorn sheep as well. And so it's disturbing to think that people are so one-minded about their business matters that they forget the impact they're having on the environment. And now it's impacting generations to come. Who knows how long it's gonna take for that you know, fertilizer to seep out of the soil, if ever. So kind of disturbing, um, but also really enlightening. And so again, I think today's theme, obviously a theme of a lot of our, you know, travels is protecting what we have. So we're just taking a little walk, check out the area so that way we're not driving the entire time. It's important to get out on the feet, look at things more closely. Like this cool plant, cactus growing right here, out of this rock face, not bad. And there's this canyon here, that looks pretty neat to explore. Let's take a look. Like there's a little slot canyon that we get to walk into here. Woo! Awesome. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Just gets better and better, huh? Wow. You can imagine the wildlife that lives in here. Oh, wow. It's pretty intense. I also imagine. This is not a place one wants to be during a storm. You can kind of get a sense of that powerful current that would gush down if there was rainfall. It doesn't look like it's gonna rain right now though, thankfully. Could it is. There's an animal. <laughs> Looks like we've reached a fork in the canyon. We decided to take the left fork, but when you come to a place like this, I will admit, it's a little bit hard to resist. Who doesn't want to know what's up around the next bend? where you may find a watering hole, where you may find bighorn sheep, or some other such surprise. Hopefully nothing scary. Also prime mountain lion habitat up here too. So you gotta keep your eyes out, your ears open. I think we're good though.
So we made it to our turnaround spot. I mean, this just keeps going. You could choose the right canyon, the left canyon. Probably has more magnificent views and wonders to find, but we're satisfied. And uh, we will head back down and back to the car. I don't know if you can see that under the rock there next to that whitish color. I don't know what kind of snake that is, but I don't want to find out. They love to live under those rocks. I don't think it's a rattler. Let's keep our distance though. Goes to show even in the winter, you do have snakes out. See if we can get a little better view with this camera. Maybe you can tell me, viewers, what you think this is. That's about as close as I want to get. It's not rattling, so it's not threatened. I don't know if it is a rattler or not. Oops, I don't think I'm even pointing at it. There we go. It turns out that that was a rattlesnake. <laughs> Thankfully, it didn't feel threatened by us. That guy was probably, I was thinking that guy's probably just coming out to sun himself, itself, in the midday heat. Clouds finally parted and uh, probably rarely sees a human being and so probably didn't know what to think when it saw us and just slithered back into its hole. Hey, check something else out that's pretty cool that I just saw. Look at that. That looks like pretty fresh dung. We're hoping to see some bighorn sheep. That would lead me to believe they're probably somewhere in the area. Oh, bighorns, where are you? Maybe Bill has found them by now. We'll go back and check on him. Just want to do a quick close-up of some desert bighorn sheep. Oops, dropped it. Big poop. It's not super fresh because Ah, it's pretty fresh actually. I was going to say cause it's pretty hard, but um, actually once I squeezed it, um, it indented quite a bit. So um, I have a feeling they walked down this canyon across to the other side. Um, when we get back to the car, we're going to grab the binoculars and see if we can spot them on the other side of the hill. I think the thing about slot canyons that is so mesmerizing is that there's a natural journey when you walk up one. You don't know what's going to be around the bend and human instinct it mandates that we find out <laughs> what's around the bend. And um, they're also natural, you know, they're their own natural ecosystem and they're in a desert. Um, oftentimes the wettest of places so you see the most uh, signs of wildlife and plant life and you have this like really unique uh, ecosystem that's fun to explore and just feels different from wherever else you were just before so slot canyons <laughs> As you can see, we're back at the Furnace Creek Visitor Center. As we were pulling into a spot, um, I realized, even though we'd only been driving maybe 35 miles an hour, I realized my four was still engaged as a result of um, a strange chugging that happened as I was pulling into that spot. Um, 
and I came out of the spot, took out the four after I realized it was engaged and came back in and everything was fine. Put it back in four, chugging happened again. So a um, little concerned, we're gonna keep it in two. We're not gonna do any more off-roading on this trip before I can take the Jeep to service. Um, but we're gonna head out to Lone Pine. Hopefully we'll um, make it there. Fortunately, the friendly folks at Farabee's, the park's Jeep rental company, were kind enough to convince me that the chugging that I felt while making a turn in four-wheel drive is completely normal. And after a quick inspection, they sent us back on the road for one more night of camping. What a day. We are after uh, an adventure of grand proportion back in Panamint Valley. Got our fire going, we've got some potatoes on the coals, um, and we're gonna just cook up a can of chili or two and enjoy the night sky. Tomorrow is supposed to be some weather. Uh, so what a wonderful place to be, and feel very grateful and very thankful for uh, having these opportunities to be out here. So, signing off.